Hi guys, it's Kathy. I have been sitting here responding to your questions. I literally haven't moved and my husband took my kids out so that I could just respond. There have been so many questions and I thought it might make sense for me to come on live and answer some of these frequently asked questions because I feel like I just keep seeing the same things come up and I want to be here to support you. Some of you are needing clarification about things. Some of you have a few questions that you just want to get an answer to and some of you have some concerns. So I just was writing up all of these questions that I see consistent and I just printed out the answers that I've just been giving you. Um, you'll see them popping up in the chat. So I wanna share that stuff with you. And if you have any other questions, you can feel free to post it in the chat and I will either get to it or I will get to it later and comment. So um, one of the biggest questions that I see coming up is that people are saying, am I gonna get lost in this program? Is there gonna be any kind of personalized attention because I'm only signing up because I wanna grow and I wanna know how that's gonna happen. So I wanna give you a sense of what this is gonna look like. So first of all, it's different than it is during the five-day challenge. When we are doing our coaching sessions, they're not being done over uh, Facebook Live like this. They're being done in a private uh, Zoom video chat where I can see all of your faces and I can hear all of your voices. So we can have a more intimate, direct line of communication. So that's number one. Number two, throughout the program, you are gonna be given opportunities to submit your songs and we will be giving you specific specific individualized feedback for the song. So you are going to have several opportunities where you're gonna hear directly, this is what we want you to think about and this is what's really working and here's some room for improvement. In addition, when the music supervisors come into the program a couple times a month, we'll make sure to vary whose songs are being heard because they will also be giving, giving feedback and we don't wanna have the same artists being given feedback every single time. So I just want you to know that that's the case. And people have been saying, how many people are in this program? Is it gonna be thousands of people? The program is about the size of a really nice college course. Um, and so we wanna keep it that way so that we as a team can make sure that everybody doesn't get lost and that there's a sense that, you, that you're being tracked and that we see you. And so hopefully that answers that question. Um, another question I see a lot is, I feel like I need to spend some time working on my songs. I'm worried that I don't have the music ready to do my best in this course. How do I know if I'm ready for this program? So this is a great question and I wanna address it in two different ways. Number one, I think that we often as human beings have a lot of imposter syndrome and I think that one of the biggest things that comes up for all of us is a feeling of, I'm not ready, I'm not ready, I'm not ready. In fact, my friend Ruth Sukup wrote a book called Do It Scared because she said, that we're often feeling not ready. I mean, I think back on my life and there were so many things I didn't feel ready for, like having kids, getting married, starting a business, buying a house. There were so many things I did not feel ready for. In fact, just to be really vulnerable, to this day, when I go to the studio to write a song, I often want to cancel the session. I often want to like, I'll be driving in my car and I'll want to like turn around. And when I was first starting out, I felt that way all the time. I felt like I wasn't ready. I felt like I would go to a session with someone and I felt like I would have nothing good to contribute or what if I got there and I didn't have any good melody ideas or lyric ideas. And I used to push myself to, to actually follow through and show up. And what I learned is that I was often pleasantly surprised at what I actually did contribute and that I was so happy that I forced myself to go because not only did beautiful things happen, but here's another thing I want you to know. When you want to improve at anything, whether you want to improve at your chess playing, you want to improve at guitar, you want to improve at playing basketball, if you play chess with someone who's better than you, even if you lose that match, you're a better player for having played with that person. So I actually feel like as scary and as intimidating as it is, it's actually better for me as an artist and a human being to play with people who I'm a little bit intimidated by because I'm gonna be better just by being around them. So that's, that's one thing to consider. The second thing to consider is that the whole reason, the entire reason why I wanted to create this program initially is because 99.999% of the songs that I hear are not the kind of songs that we can actually find homes for. And so you heard a lot about that in this five days and I walked you through why that is and what that looks like. 
But what happens is I see a lot of people typing and saying, I'm so glad I did this five days, so now I'm going to spend the next six months working on songs. And then when I'm ready, again, this whole thing about being ready, I'll join the program. So I want to caution you because Malcolm Gladwell has a book called Outliers where he talks about how it takes 10,000 hours of doing something to become a master, right? If you want to be great at golf, like if you spend 10,000 hours, you could become Tiger Woods. The Beatles are mentioned in that book and they talk about how they spent 10,000 hours working together as a cohesive band. But what he also talks about is you need to spend 10,000 hours working on the right stuff. Imagine if you were thinking that you wanted to strengthen your back, but instead of doing yoga poses, you spent 10,000 hours slouching, right? Slumping over. So what that's gonna do is actually make you the best at being the worst, right? Like you're going to be spending time and you're going to be actually making it a bigger habit doing things the wrong way. And so it is essential that you guys get feedback along the way. Just like if you want to improve your photography skills, if you want to improve your writing skills, you would want to have someone who's actually gotten results in that, someone who's a master who can look at what you're doing and see if they can find ways for you to bring out more of yourself and improve your process. So I want you to understand that the way that we developed and designed this program was number one with the intention of helping you grow and find mastery as an artist. So John is gonna be helping you really learn to listen and talk to you about songwriting and production. And I will be helping you do that as well since I'm a songwriter, he's a songwriter and a producer. And I will also be there to help you not only understand how to write better songs and how to work your process so that you can actually free yourself creatively and align more with who you really are. I think that's where we both have different expertise and so we will be able to give you feedback and we will be able to help you actually create the right songs. In addition, you're going to be hearing in this program directly from the people who choose music at Netflix and different ad agencies and NBC and Paramount and Lionsgate. And when you hear directly from them, you're going to be able to give them more of what they want. Imagine if you decided to go to the grocery store and you were going to get some groceries, right, for your best friend. She just had a baby and you're gonna go get her a bunch of stuff. But let's say you don't realize this, but the baby, that she was told that the baby, you know, is breastfeeding and therefore she can't eat spicy food. And she, you don't know this, but the doctor said, you know, don't eat cabbage. And these are all things that are true, by the way, because I have three kids. So let's say you don't know that and you just go to the grocery store and you're trying to be a loving friend and you bring back all these like yummy things and your friend says, oh, I'm so frustrated because I want so much to be able to enjoy this, but thank you so much. I feel so bad you spent all that money. I actually can't eat any of that because of this, this, and this, right? I have this allergy or I'm breastfeeding and I need this or whatever it is. It's so much easier to get what that person wants when you find out what they need, right? Just like you're going to get your wife or your husband or your best friend or your kid a gift. Like if you kind of get an inside scoop on what they love, it's, it's easier, right? It's easier to nail it. And you're like, oh, they love King's hockey. I'm going to go get them like King's hockey stuff, right? And you're, they're going to be so excited. So you're going to hear directly. And so as you are working on this, you are going to be not only in a framework where you're going to get feedback so that all the adjustments and remember that we don't want good to be the enemy of great. We really don't want to shoot to be good. We want to shoot to be great. And so you want to get that edge. And I think for anybody, if you think about it, let's say you were going to go take tennis lessons what's the, what do you need a teacher for, right? You're going to be like, all I do is take this racket and I just like keep hitting this ball. But why would somebody need a tennis coach? What's the point? Because there might be a little slight difference in the way you're holding the racket or in the way that you're approaching the ball or in something you're not seeing. And this is how a person is going to help you get that two millimeter difference. That's why Serena Williams has a coach, right? There's something to it that we can help ourselves to really gain mastery. So if you're thinking, I want to go do this on my own so that I can then be ready because the point of this class is pitching music. I want you to be clear. When I first started teaching this program, I was just teaching people and helping people craft the songs. It then dawned on me that since I have spent the last 14 years building these relationships, that what I should probably also offer to my students is a pipeline so that they can connect directly with these people and they can learn how to pitch directly. And that's something that I think that we offer that not everybody does, but that's an added bonus, right? So 
the way that we structure the program is that the first three months, you're really going to be dedicated to your process, to really growing yourself creatively and to be understanding from us and from the gatekeepers directly what they need and learning to listen and learning to really build your craft. After that, the second three months is when you're going to be given the opportunity to pitch your music. And for that, you can go ahead and start showing up and start pitching stuff that you have. And if you don't feel like your songs are ready, then you can keep using our tools and our services to give you feedback because we will be giving you feedback on those individual songs and you can be working that process. So that's something that I just really wanted you to know. All right. I just wrote these all down today. Other other FAQs. Um, and and yeah, I, I also wrote it down, by the way, that like I think that success always leaves clues. And so sometimes I think I actually wasted lots of time and lots of money because early on I would write songs that nobody gave me feedback on. I would just kind of write them and I'd go in the studio and get them produced and spend the money to hire session players and to hire a mixer. And then I would be like, oh my God, I, I spent, I look back and I honestly probably spent 15 or $20,000 over the first four years recording songs that I never should have recorded because they weren't my best songs yet. You know, they were song number four and five on the way to song 16, which was really the song that I should have recorded. And then six, song 16 might have just needed like a slight change production wise for it to actually have gone the distance in terms of, um, let's say, licensing. But maybe I just didn't know that at the time. So I think the fastest way to get from where we are to where we want to go is to be around someone who's done that and to get their feedback so that they can show us exactly what they've done. And that makes a big difference. So that's another thing. Another question that comes up, um, people have been saying in the chat, I don't have the skills to produce my own songs and I don't have the money to get my songs produced by a great producer. So how am I going to be able to turn in songs for your review if I can't produce them properly? So this is another important question. So I want to give you the answer. So one thing that's been absolutely fantastic and you can ask our students because it's completely true and it's just so wonderful is that this program has become such an incredible resource in that so many of our artists collaborate with each other. There's so many great producers inside this program. And so what happens is there'll be somebody who's like, I'm really great at lyrics. I have a really good voice. I'm good at melodies. And they'll team up with some of the producers in the program. And we've seen that be such a wonderful thing where people don't even have to pay for production because they work with each other. Um, Zion and Nancy work together inside the class to create that song that landed that Sephora spot. We have so many people John Kleinbell, who now works with us, he was one of those people who emerged in the program and said, I can produce and started producing dozens of people inside the program. And there's so many of our, our people who do that really, really and truly. Um, and so now not only do does that exist, but we also have a nice list of producers who are um, people who have been students who understand what it's like to be a student and who give um, and who give that kind of respect to the students and give students either a really good rate or sometimes just collaborate with you and say, I'll just do this on spec. And then if the song lands, you'll give me, let's say, a thousand bucks off the top for the production or whatever it is. And you guys make that agreement between yourselves. Um, the other thing that happens is we have a pipeline to the actual producers who are producing the songs that I was playing you, the people who work with Ingrid Michaelson, the people who are working with the Katie Herzigs and the Tim Myers. And those are, the, those are the people who we have come and actually speak to you in the program. And what we've done is we created a pipeline so that you guys can go work with them also when normally they're usually not available. And they have said many times that the reason they are always available to our students or that they try to be is because they find that our students are hardworking and really come in there and they have a they have an end in mind. They're not just like gonna record some random song. They're, they're there writing a great song and they take it seriously and they're very empathetic and kind and easy to work with. And so what we've also seen is it becomes a great resource because people collaborate inside the program and then if they wanna work with a producer on that level, together they can split the fee and not only ju just get a song recorded, but get a song recorded by someone who has a track record of hundreds of songs that have already been licensed. And those are great producers that we already work with like John John Kleinbell, like Billy Leffler, like Rich Jacks, like Adrian Gonzalez. And these are some of the producers who our students have gone through because those people have a relationship with me. And because of that, they work with our students. And it's been just, I think, such a nice thing for me to share my relationships with you. So that's the answer to that. Um, another question I see coming up a lot is people are saying, I'm really busy. I have a nine to five job. I'm worried I won't be able to make this work. What's the time commitment? So that's another really important question. And I want you to hear the answer, which is I designed this class for busy people. 
when I created this program, I was pregnant with my third daughter, already had two other kids, obviously, and I was not only running this program, but I was also running the agency, and I'm an artist. Now, I do all of that, plus I have a podcast, and I just wrote a book. So I have so much on my plate, and with the three kids, I know what it feels like. And so, number one, one of my coaching like expertise, one of the, the expertise that I feel like I'm strongest in is helping you be productive. So I will be teaching you how to get the most out of the smallest amount of time. This whole idea of the four-hour work week is really something that I want to show you what that looks like. I think a lot of people spin their wheels because they're not in an energized state of mind, but also they're not working smart. So they're not really knowing where to focus. And I think what we do in this program is say, this is really what's going to matter. This is really what's critical. Focus on here. And just like I showed you on day three or day four with the songwriting process of brain dump, co-write, it really starts to cut out the fat and I can teach you how to use your time wisely. As far as what's required for the course, it is really truly up to you for whatever you want to put in is what you get out. So there's no requirement like this is mandatory. If you don't show up to this, you don't get your song heard, you won't get feedback. It's really sort of you pace yourself. Um, what we do have is we have a sign after the first three months, we, we expect that you turn in one fully recorded song. And then for the second set of three months, you know, it's a six month program. So within the first three months, we ask for one song to be turned in fully recorded by the end of three months. And then the second set of three months, so month four, five, and six, we ask for a song to be turned in at the end of each of those months. So that's four songs by the end. It's still not mandatory, right? Remember that whatever you learn in this program, you're gonna to continue to be rinsing and repeating and you're gonna to continue to take the relationships with you, with the co-writers, the collaborators, and it takes time to build relationships with music supervisors. And so why would you wanna wait for that, right? You'd wanna start on that now. So as far as the time commitment is concerned, um, the other thing to know is that every single week you get a coaching session. We alternate, me and John, so some weeks you get it from me, some weeks you get it from John, and then you also, um, every single week, you get office hours. In addition, every other week, you're gonna be hearing from a music supervisor who comes in, and they will be listening to songs. So as far as the time commitment is, you're you're going to have what's available to you is gonna be a few a couple sessions a week where you're gonna get coaching, slash you're gonna get Q&A, slash you're also gonna have another session every other week with a music supervisor. Um, so. If you can make it live, you can make it live. If you can't make it live, it doesn't mean your songs won't get played. We will ask you every single time before we know we have a session to submit songs and we will make sure to keep varying whose songs get played so not everybody, not all, every artist gets played at the same time. And then you can watch the replay of any of these coaching sessions whenever you want. I like to do my sessions on Sundays because I know that some people work nine to five and John will be doing his sessions during the week and some of the music supervisor sessions will be done in the evenings just so we can vary things up to make sure that we try to get as much of the accommodating as we can for people's schedules. So I hope that makes sense. Um, another question, people say, I don't live in Los Angeles. I don't even live in the USA. Do I need to be lo local in order to make this work? So here's a really cool response, which it, it, this might surprise you, but the majority of our students don't live in Los Angeles. In fact, at our last event and every other live event we've done, I usually say stand up if you took a flight to get here and 90% of the audience stands up. We have artists who live in Switzerland, Australia, Germany, Slovakia, the UK. Um, we have artists who live in Canada. We have artists who live all over the states from Georgia to Arizona to Ohio to Nashville to Colorado, everywhere. And what's incredible is that these artists are able to work together over Zoom video. They do co-writing sessions that way. They use Google Docs to go ahead and write lyrics and, and help each other make changes. They even fly vocal sessions. One of the things that John Kleinville is going to do is teach you guys how to record simple things at your own home. So let's say you're not a producer, but you're a vocalist and you want to send your vocals. We're going to show you how to do that easily so that you don't have to be in the same place. And it's incredible, but I'm telling you, Hundreds of songs in our program have been created by people who don't even live in the same continent. And so just wanted you to know that. Um, somebody said space is limited, so why not take artists in the program through an audition process? And my answer this morning, which I wanted to share with you, I thought it was pretty clever, I just wrote it this morning. I said, we have seen that the most important thing is attitude, empathy, and generosity. I said, I wish we could audition that. When I find a way to do that, I'll consider it. And that's really the truth. The most important thing here is not that you're ready, it's not that you're the most talented, it's that you're the kind of person who's willing to show up, give this your all, be kind, be generous, have a good attitude, and from there, 
that's that's what makes everything possible. I can think of so many people who live on my block who have talent, but how many people have a heart? How many people have that feeling of like they're going to be generous to people around them and they're going to be supportive and they're going to be perseverant? That's that's I mean, even in Angela Duckworth Duckworth's book, Grit, she talks about how that's what matters most for success. It's not IQ. It's not the talent. It's the perseverance and it's the attitude because that mindset, if you're focused on outcome, you're going to fail. If you're focused on process, you are going to win. And that is what matters. Um, somebody else asked me today, is it a guarantee that everyone who takes this course will find success licensing their songs to TV and film during this program? No. This is how I would answer you. If you were gonna to go to NYU Film School, I do not think that the Dean of Admissions is gonna sit there and tell you that you are guaranteed to be Steven Spielberg. The answer is you're not. The answer is that NYU Film School is going to give you the recipe to be the absolute best setup to do the best filmmaking, right? That's what they can do. As far as whether you're going to have that outcome, that has so much to do with you, right? That has to do with how much are you really showing up and doing the work? How much are you really um, in this process? How often are you giving up, right? All of those variables. So we can't guarantee that. But what I can tell you, which is pretty phenomenal, is that I started this just over three years ago and we've seen over 100 of our students get licenses. So that's pretty amazing. The other thing to keep in mind is that like John Kleinbell, for instance, or Sam Kanak, or uh, some of them, I mean, Tam Tamara actually said this also, Tamara's actually I think had like 12 placements already. And sometimes the songs that you write during the program are the songs that wind up getting licensed, but they don't find a home for six months later. It depends. And it also depends how much work are you willing to show up and are you really following through, right? But the, the, the amazing thing is that the results really are there. And if it had just happened that I started this program and four people got results, I would say, well, it proves that it's doable. But the fact that we've had over 100 artists find licenses in three and a half years, it shows that something is really actually working. And I think a lot of it has to do with the way that we work and the kind of people that meet each other. And I think it has to do with the pipeline to the right people and me also teaching you how to pitch because the how to pitch part, how to learn how to pitch yourself is huge. I know so many talented artists in LA who send their music to a licensing agent and then sit back and hope that everything's gonna roll in. And I like to teach you how to fish for yourself because no one is gonna be as excited about your career as you are every day. That's just the truth. Uh, what other questions came in today? Oh, somebody said, if I'm in a band and I have three awesome musicians who work with me, um, I'm wondering if we can all split the cost of the enrollment. And I said, uh, the same way you would if you were getting guitar lessons, like if your friend wanted to learn guitar, your friend would also have to pay the guitar teacher, it's the same thing, right? Like it's, we don't say like, oh, as long as you're in a band, have every one of your band members join us because we want to give, we're giving each one of you, right, the same value, so it's the same. Um, and then somebody asked me another really good question, which is the question of, do we work with artists? Do we sign artists who are not in our program? And I want to tell you why and how this all works. So one of the second most important reasons why I started the, the this part of the program where we listen to songs and where we bring in music supervisors and where we do sign artists so I started the program because I wanted to help artists learn to hone their craft because a lot of the songs I was hearing, I was like, I can't use these. And I was frustrated and I would spend hours. You can go back and ask the artists who knew me before I started this class. I used to meet with them for coffee and sit with them and give them feedback. And I was like, I literally don't have the time to help every person. So I started the program. Then the second thing that frustrated me is I started noticing that so many of my artists would start understanding, they would start getting it, their music would get better, and then they would say, Kathy, what do I do? No one takes unsolicited music. And I was like, oh my God, that's true, that's so ridiculous. And the truth is that's the same thing if you're a screenwriter. Like if you wanna send your, your screenplay, your, you know, if you wanna send a script to NBC or Fox, they're like, sorry, we don't take it. Same thing with you're an actor. If you want to audition for the new Mindy Kaling show, they're like, you can't just submit, right? So there's always these like gatekeepers. And the way that it works in every industry is that eventually you make relationships, right? You like find a way in just the way that I did. Like I showed you that I was like, 
okay, this is the person who chooses music for this, so I gotta meet this person. I'm gonna go to the panel, try to meet them afterwards, and sometimes you can, and sometimes you can't. Sometimes they say hello, but there's like a line of people, or you send an email, and then you get polite and persistent, and you follow up, and like, there are ways in, but it took me years to meet this person, and then this person, and so what I decided to do is actually create a path so that you can actually directly meet these people. And not only that, but I think because I have been so committed to my integrity and keeping a good relationship with these people, when they meet you and they associate you with me, I think they think to themselves, because they've told me this, I know if it's one of your artists, they're gonna be polite and respectful and they're gonna have the songs that they know I need instead of just sending me some random song with like acoustic guitar and they know I can't use it. It's just like a flat, like not that there's a problem with acoustic guitars in general, but if the song had no dynamics or if it was just a breakup song that's a ballad, those kinds of things. So it's really helped create a path for people where there really isn't one. So when people say to me, that's so rude that you don't take unsolicited material. I can't believe you only work with artists in your program. The sheer amount of music that comes into us, I want you to notice there's over 8,000 people in this challenge. And not only that, we have, we're out there, right? We're, we're a company that people know about. We get thousands of songs a month. The sheer amount, there's no way. There, it's impossible. It's absolutely actually impossible for us to listen to the songs. But the second thing is no one takes on solicit material because it, there's intellectual property rights. There's reasons why we couldn't do that. I talked about that earlier in the week if you were listening. And then the third reason is it's not productive because you haven't gotten the time to figure out what we wanted from the grocery store and you sent us something random. So in order for us to know that it's going to be fruitful, I actually think it makes amazing sense. I think I'm one of the only agencies out there that created, a, I don't even know of any other, there might be a couple, but I don't know of any other that is a boutique licensing agency that then created a school to teach you what it is that we need and create a path in. Because there are no, there, there, this doesn't exist. It's not like we're doing something different than anyone else, except the thing we're doing different is we created a way for you to not only get a path in for us to listen, but to get us to coach you and help you and give you feedback. And then in addition, one thing that we didn't have to do, but I wanted to do is give you a direct pipeline to the music supervisors. And you don't need to use us as an agent. Like it would have been the easiest thing in the world to say like, we connected you, that's what agents do. So any placement you get from someone who was in the class, you're gonna pay us a commission, but we don't. That's, that's not our business model. That's not what we're in it for. So I think it's actually an incredibly beautiful thing. I think the fact that it exists at all, if I wanted to license my music, I would get in there just for that alone, to be like, oh my God, I actually have a way in. Because otherwise, it's a, it's a long road to try to get your music heard because that's the way the industry is. That's the way every industry is. It's not like you can just send unsolicited work. You have to work that, right? Like you're gonna have to be resourceful and creative to try to get in. And I'm not saying that's impossible and I wanna teach you how to be working that, but that's something that develops and takes time. That's not like a direct pipeline. We're in this program, you do have direct access to us as agents hearing it to the music supervisors hearing it, to the folks at ad agencies hearing it, because we bring them into the program and we've seen people directly make relationships with those folks and we encourage you to follow up with them and say, we heard you in the program, I was in that class, I love what you said about this, um, and I heard you need a song about this and this is why I'm sending you this. And then people are pleasantly surprised because it's a totally different world. It puts you in a different bucket. I'm trying to see if there's any other questions that I saw today. Um, oh, um, let me just see, let's see. Um, I guess the one last question which comes up for people all the time is, I don't have the money for this program, so how can I pay for it? So that, that, is, that is something that comes up a lot. So I wanna just talk about this for a second. First of all, if you absolutely- Okay, I figured out what it is. I've literally been on my computer for, about mm, I'm for about nine hours straight and I think my computer is just completely overheated so I don't think I can go live on my computer right now so I'm using my phone just to say hello um, so I'm giving my computer a second so what I was gonna share with you before the last question is that people often say 
Um, well, not everybody, but some people say this is really difficult because I don't have the, the finances to afford this program. What should I do? So um, first of all, if that's the situation you're in, then that's not easy. And so I, I want you to know that I hear that. Um, there are so many things that I sometimes want to do. And sometimes with having three kids, I can't travel there. You know, it just depends. Um, sometimes if I'm really, really clear that I want to make something a priority, even if it feels like I can't do it, I find a way to do it. Um, but sometimes for some of you, it's like, no, Kathy, you don't get it. I like, I'm already looking at what I'm spending and I, there's just no way. That's why I created a five day free training program. And I hope that you guys felt my heart and I showed up with everything. And I know that there's so many people who over the years don't get me at all and have suggested to me like, don't do that. Why would you give all that away for free? You should just talk for like 25 minutes and then tell them that everything else is in the program. And why would you show up for hours for free? I'm like, um, cause there's more to life than money. And I think that we all know this, but we don't all get paid in terms of money. We get paid what, what sort of fuels us most is purpose. And, and I feel so good doing this work and I had such a good week. So I got a lot more out of it than dollars and cents. That's number one. Um, being in service is a big part of my identity. So if you don't have the money and you're feeling so frustrated, I want you to know that um, that's why I showed up this week. And I offer, I offer so much free content. Like I have a podcast, which is not about music specifically, but I do that twice a week. And I just try to do as much as I can. That being said, it's obviously a different situation. It's a game changer when you have coaching, when you're in a program. There's a reason why people pay for things, right? There's, there's a reason why things are valuable. That, that would be ridiculous for things to not be valuable enough to be charged for someone to charge for it, you know, obviously. And there's so much that goes into this program and I'm so proud of what we do to make this possible for you. So there's a couple ways if you're saying to yourself, you know, maybe she's right, maybe there's a way that I could do it. Let me just give you a couple ways to think about it. Um, I have seen in the past with my own eyes, students who wanted so much to be in this program and one of two things happened. Either one, they looked at their life and said, you know what, I probably spend $49 a week not realizing it on a few drinks or on a yoga class here or there or on some Starbucks. And if I cut down even a little bit, maybe it would offset some of the cost. That's sometimes the case. The other thing that sometimes comes up, which I've seen, is that students will sometimes decide to get really resourceful and say, well, how else could I do it? And sometimes people make a Patreon account or a GoFundMe or a Kickstarter, and it's been pretty cool what I've seen. I've seen artists be able to offset the whole price of the course because they decide that they're going to offer value back to their audience. And uh, people start to give them money to fuel their dreams. In fact, sometimes I've seen people post these videos on their GoFundMe like, I want, I want you to support me in doing this vulnerable thing and going for what I want. And what I'm gonna give back to you is that once a month, I'm gonna share with you my progress and anything that I find valuable that my coach shares with me, I'm gonna do a post of like the three things that mindset wise were a game changer for me. And who knows? I mean, there's so many ways to get resourceful. So that's another idea. Um, and then sometimes um, the reason why we say like, oh, we can't afford it, sometimes, Sometimes it's really true, and sometimes it's really another limiting belief because we, we want to not be able to afford it almost because it keeps us not having to take accountability. Like having a good excuse can be really good for your comfort zone because if you as long as you have that excuse, you don't have to do anything. And that's not the case for everybody. There are some people who are like, no, I'm a single parent, da 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 da, da. and that's why there was a free week of education and I stand by it and I hope that you learned a lot from it. So that I think takes us through all the FAQs. I put the rest of them in the, um, in the other uh, thread and the other video. If you guys have any other questions, then please feel free to comment them. Um, and I will do my best to keep, I guess I'm not gonna be doing it on my laptop. I'll use my desktop or I will use my phone. And I will reply to you guys. But my team and I are standing by. We are here to help support you. 
Um, oh, another question that's come up, I just remembered, people have been saying, if I don't sign up now, can I sign up in the spring? And my answer to them is the truth. And that's all I can tell you is the truth. Um, I don't know if there's going to be another cohort. I never know, I'll tell you why. So um, every single year, and it seems like every month actually, my life just gets busier. My book comes out in the fall with Macmillan, and I don't know if it's gonna become a bestseller. I think that we have a good shot because we've already sold a few thousand copies. Um, I, I've just seen what's happened. The podcast just started off as a side thing and then it kind of exploded. So every single month, just to keep myself in check, I say to myself, I'm going to take this on, whatever I'm doing, I'm gonna commit for the next six months and then I'm gonna see where I'm at because I also have my health to worry about, my kids to worry about and so I don't know. I would love to be able to always do this. Um, I have a feeling that at some point, the work that I'm doing in this world, you guys could feel it this week, right? Like I love really helping to coach people and the podcast, I think that's why it's really become so successful. I feel like at some point that's going to become so much bigger than I can handle and I'll probably wind up not having the time to do this specific program. But right now I'm doing it and I'm committed to showing up and I made the time in my schedule and cleared other things so I can. Um, that's my answer. and. We'll see where we are in six months, um, and then I'll let you know. Um, oh my gosh, Madeline said, I was a single parent this morning, but I signed up. And that's really incredible. I have to say that I would never steer you wrong, and I think that this program, I don't think it's just about songwriting. You know, I think it's about really getting in like the best alignment of our life. And sometimes when we don't have money coming in, it's because we have a lot of stuff to work out around money in terms of it's a bigger topic so I don't want to get into it now but I let's just say that one of the things that I'm really good at is helping people get clear and unstuck so that whatever is possible abundance wise we can figure out how to bring that in uh, we're going to talk a lot about that but there's a lot of deep work around money and beliefs around money and what money really is and there's so much of it available and it's not mutually exclusive you can be a good person and have money you could be a bad person and have money right you can be poor and be kind you can be rich and be kind and there are so many ways to bring more money into our ecosystem and essentially it comes down to value money is value on paper and we exchange value for value and so i want to talk about how valuable you are and all the different ways that you can create value in your life for other people and serve the world and that's where money comes in we can get into that later but i think especially in a way for people who are struggling financially um, the work that i do might actually crack you wide open and there's so much more here i mean the work that i do outside of this program is on my podcast don't keep your day job and I just wrote a book all about how to create abundance in your life through doing work that serves the world and so the scope of the coaching I'll be giving you goes way beyond the songwriting and I think that might be the most priceless money you can spend because getting a good coach to work with you one-on-one -on -one or a therapist is minimum like 250 an hour and most coaches that I know are working at more of a three thousand to five thousand dollar rate per month which is the rate that I charge when I work with listeners of my audience one-on-one. -on -one. So this might be something to think about. Um, and uh, Patricia said, it's an ongoing program. Do you run it every six months? So I just had talked about, you can when, you, when I'm done, you can rewind and be like, because I just talked about whether I'm going to do it again in six months. But um, it's a six-month program. And then when it's finished, um, those of you who finish will be alumni, and you'll be able to join our alumni program which is really cool because it's a quarter of the cost of the regular program and it gives you some of those main ingredients that you need like a pipeline oh no don't be sorry a pipeline to the searches you need and the alumni program gives you just that like way into getting some feedback without having to pay the full rate and that's available to people once they finish the program um which is more of a full-fledged education Hi, Mikey. Mikey, I was just telling the students earlier how sometimes when people are really serious about wanting to join and they don't have the funds, they'll create like a GoFundMe. And Mikey actually, I've told this story before because it's very impressive, but Mikey actually about 
six or seven months after taking my program, he wanted to take another program. It was like a, a weekend, a songwriter's retreat. And I saw him post a GoFundMe. Hey guys, I wanna do the songwriter retreat. I really wanna do it. It wasn't even my program. I was just so impressed with how resourceful he was. So I actually donated money to his GoFundMe so that he could go to that songwriter retreat. And he raised the money in less than 24 hours to go to the retreat. And it stuck out to me and I thought, it's always true, there's always a way. And so I told that to some of our students and we've seen other students now do that. And it's hard for me to resist actually donating when people do that because I think it takes a lot of, um, I think, I think it takes a lot of courage to do it. And I think it, it actually winds up inspiring other people to do it. And I think when people see you, they get something out of helping you fund your dream because it reminds them in your video, like, oh, I should be taking my dream seriously. And that's so cool that this person could be vulnerable and put it out there. So I've watched that happen. I've also seen people, um, we have a couple students who created a Patreon account where they were creating patrons and they gave them back and it wasn't just a GoFundMe, but it was like a, if you pay me a little bit every month, I'll make you, you know, I'll send you free downloads of songs or take you through the process or people have gotten a lot of cool things out of that. Remember that Amanda Palmer makes $50,000 a month from her Patreon and I did a whole episode with her. There's just so many ways to get out of our own way. Um, all right, so um, uh, Amy, wow. You guys are all amazing. And uh, Janine, yeah, I'm glad that you signed up. I'm gonna get to know you guys, that's so fun. And April's watching, April, you're so talented and you deserve everything. Um, so anyway, if you guys have any more questions, you can definitely post them, we are standing by. And we just wanna be here to support you guys in if you need help in making this decision. Sometimes you know in your gut what you wanna do, but you're scared or you're afraid or you just, you know, we live in a time where there's such an empathy deficit there is such a deficit that it's easy not to trust. And it's easy to think, oh, maybe this person, you know, might not be really who she says she is. And so I'm here to answer your questions. And if you just need a little reassurance or anything else, I'm here, my team is here, we can answer you. And I think you'll be pleasantly surprised at the way we do business and my kids are home. Um, so I'm gonna jump off, but if you have any questions, definitely post them and we will be here to answer.